Hello and welcome to Pre-Algebra Lesson 45. In this video, we're going to learn about percents. So our lesson objectives for today, we just want to learn how to convert a decimal to a percent and vice versa, meaning we also want to learn how to take a percent and convert it into a decimal. And then we want to learn how to convert a fraction to a percent as well. So a percent is just another method used to describe a part of a whole amount. Basically, it's just another fraction. So a percent is a fraction whose denominator is 100, okay? So if you see a fraction and the denominator is 100, you're dealing with a percent. So as a more convenient way to write a fraction with the denominator of 100, we can use this percentage symbol to denote a percent. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. But one thing you need to understand is that the literal meaning is parts per 100. All right, so let's start out by looking at kind of the easier scenario. So let's say you start off on your test, you're having a percent test, and you have this 17 over 100. And your teacher says, write this using a percentage symbol. Well, the first thing you'd want to do is take your numerator, which is 17, and just write it. And then all you have to do is follow it with that percentage symbol. So 17 over 100 is equal to 17%. And that's all you need to do when your denominator is 100. It's nice and clean and simple. You have 17 parts out of 100 parts. Kind of something you can relate this to. Let's say that you take a test and you fail the test badly, right? You just completely bomb it. So you have 100 questions on this test and you only get 17 of them correct. So out of 100 questions, I got 17 correct. So my score on the test is going to be 17 out of 100 or 17%. Let's take a look at 3 over 100. So again, if the denominator is 100, to write this using a percentage symbol, I'll just take that numerator, which is 3, and I'll follow it with a percentage symbol. So 3 over 100 is equal to 3%. As another example, I have 96 over 100. Again, as long as the denominator is 100, I just write the numerator, whatever it is. In this case, it's 96 and I follow it with a percentage symbol. So 96 over 100 is equal to 96%. Now we're looking at 512 over 100, and it's okay that this number is greater than 100. It doesn't matter. We're still just gonna take the numerator, which in this case is 512, and we're gonna follow it up with a percentage symbol. So 512 over 100 is equal to 512%. Okay, what about 0 0.01 over 100? Again, it's the same thing. I take my numerator, which in this case is 0 0.01, and I just follow it up with a percentage symbol. So 0 0.01 over 100, again, the denominator is 100, is equal to 0 0.01%. All right, let's take a look at something a little bit more challenging. Still going to be pretty easy, though. So we're looking at decimal to percent, right? So I'm taking a decimal, and I'm going to change it to a percentage. So to write a decimal as a percent, we just move our decimal point two places to the right and place the percentage symbol at the end. Let's look at this quick exercise. Change each decimal to a percent. So as I said, we're just gonna move our decimal point two places to the right, and then we're gonna put a percentage symbol at the end. So we're gonna start out with 0 0.032. So I'm gonna say this is equal to, I'm gonna move this guy one, two places to the right, so that would give me 3.2, and I'm gonna put that percentage symbol after it. So 0 0.032 is equal to 3.2%. Now, some of you might be saying, where did those zeros to the left of the three go? Remember, if I have two zeros to the left of the three, that does not add value to the number, so we can just get rid of them. All right, for the next one, we have 0 0.115. And again, all I wanna do is take this decimal point and move it one, two places to the right. So I ended up with 11.5, and then I put my percentage symbol after it. So 0 0.115 is equal to 11.5%. Next, we're looking at 6.23. Again, move the decimal point two places to the right. So that's going to be 623. And then put a percentage symbol at the end. So 6.23 is equal to 623%. All right, now we're looking at 0 0.85. Again, take your decimal point and go one, two places to the right. So I'd have 85 and then put the percentage at the end. So 85%. 0 0.85 is equal to 85%. All right, now we're looking at 0 0.00037. Again, this goes one, two places to the right. So this will be equal to 0 
and then percent. And you can put it at zero out in front if you want, just for clarity, it doesn't really matter. 0 0.00037 is equal to 0.037%. Okay, let's look at two more. We have 0 0.014. Again, this decimal point's going one, two places to the right. So that's gonna be 1.4. And then just throw your percentage symbol at the end. So 0 0.014 is equal to 1.4%. And then for the final one, we have 312.25. Again, this decimal point goes one, two places to the right. So that's gonna be 31,225 and then put your percentage symbol. So 312.25 is equal to 31,225%. Okay, so let's say we wanna reverse this process and take a percent and go to a decimal. So essentially you just reverse what you just did. So to write a percent as a decimal, we move our decimal point two places to the left. Remember, we're going two places to the right. Now we're just reversing that and going two places to the left. And then we're just gonna delete the percentage symbol, right? We're just reversing what we just did. So we're gonna change each percent to a decimal, and I'm gonna start out with 4.27%. So let me rewrite this over here. I'm going to delete this thing, I don't need it, and I'm just gonna write the number 4.27. Now I'm gonna to need to add one zero in here to make this work, and this is gonna go one, two places to the left, so I'm gonna have 0 0.0427, right? So 4.27% is equal to 0 0.0427, or I could put a zero out in front for clarity. Again, 4.27% is equal to 0 0.0427. All right, for the next one, we have 39.867%. I'm just gonna rewrite this number, 39.867. And again, I don't need this percentage symbol, so I can just leave it off. Now I'm gonna move this decimal point one, two places to the left, and so I'm gonna end up with a decimal point there. Let me put a zero out in front for clarity. And we'll say that 39.867% is equal to 0 0.39867. All right, for the next one, we have 215.37%. Again, I'm just gonna rewrite this number, 215.37. I'm not gonna write the percentage symbol, we don't need it. And I'm just gonna move this decimal point again, two places to the left, two places to the left, and that'll go right there. So 215.37% is equal to 2.1537. Okay, for the last one we're gonna look at, we have 0.003591%. And of course, I'm just gonna rewrite the number. Leave the percentage symbol off, I don't need that anymore. And the decimal point's just gonna go two places to the left. So one, and then two places to the left. So that would be right there. And if I want to, I can put a zero. Let me kind of scoot this over a little bit. I can put a zero out in front for clarity. So 0.003591% is equal to 0 0.00003591. All right, so now let's talk about the most tedious scenario you're gonna come across. And basically a more tedious situation comes up when we're asked to convert a fraction to a percent. There's kind of two ways you can think about doing this. The first way, let's say you have something like four fifths. Well, you could divide the numerator by the denominator, basically take the fraction and put it into a decimal, then take that decimal and convert it into a percentage. Now, the kind of the faster way would be to transform the fraction into an equivalent fraction with 100 as its denominator. But you're gonna see that that's not always so simple. So for four fifths, let's do it both ways. The long way would be to say, okay, four you know, divided by five, put my decimal point here and bring it up, and put a zero here. Five's not gonna go into four, but we'll go into 48 times. Eight times five is 40, subtract and get zero. So we know that four fifths is equal to 0.8. And then to convert this to a percentage, we'd move this two places to the right. So one, put a zero there, two. So the decimal point would go there. And then I would add a percentage symbol to the end. So four fifths is equal to 0.8, and it's also equal to 80%. The other way you could have done this, which is much faster in this case, is to take four fifths and just realize that if I multiply five times 20, I get to 100, right? And if you didn't know that, you could take 100 and just say, okay, if I divide 100 by five, I get 20. So that means if I multiply five by 20, I get 100. It's whatever I need to multiply this by 
to get to 100. So if I multiply this by 20, my denominator is 100, and I know I have a percent. If I multiply the denominator by 20, I also have to multiply the numerator by 20 so that I have an equivalent fraction. So 4 times 20 is 80 over, again, 5 times 20, that's 100. So now I have a percent, a fraction whose denominator is 100. And when this occurs, we just simply take the numerator, which in this case is 80, and we follow it up with a percentage symbol. So we get the same answer either way, 80%. It's just a different kind of way to do it. And in most cases, this is going to be a lot quicker. But sometimes you're going to run into problems using this method. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. All right, so what about 3 fourths? Again, there's two ways we can kind of do this. We can take 3 and we can divide it by 4. Put my decimal point here and bring it up into the answer. 4 is not going to go into 3, but we'll go into 37 times. 7 times 4 is 28. Subtract and get 2. Bring down a 0. 4 goes into 20 exactly 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. Subtract and get 0. So 3 fourths is 0 0.75. 0 0.75. Now, again, to turn this into a percentage, I just move that decimal point two places to the right. So it's going to go 1, two places to the right. That gives me 75. And then I just add my percentage symbol in. So 3 fourths is equal to 0 0.75, and it's equal to 75%. Now, Kind of, again, the quicker way to do this would have been to say, okay, I have 3 fourths, and I can multiply 4 times what to get to 100. Well, if you don't know the answer to that is 25, again, take 100 and divide by 4. 100 divided by 4 is 25, so therefore 4 times 25 is 100. You can always use little tricks like that to get what you're looking for. So we would multiply by 25 over 25, since that would give me a denominator of 100, and 3 times 25 is 75. So now I have a percent, right? I have a fraction whose denominator is 100. And essentially all I need to do is take that numerator and rewrite it, follow it up with a percentage symbol. So 3 fourths is going to be equal to 75 over 100, and that's equal to 75%. Okay, what if we had 11 over 20? So again, we can take 11 and we can divide it by 20. So I'll need to put a decimal point here and bring it up into the answer. So 20 is not going to go into 1. It's not going to go into 11. It will go into 110 5 times. 5 times 20 is 100. Subtract and we'd have 10. Go ahead and put a 0 there and bring it down. 20 goes into 100 5 times. 5 times 20 is 100. Subtract and get 0. So 11 over 20 or 11 20ths is going to be equal to 0.55 as a decimal. And then as a percentage, we just move this two places to the right. So that would be 55, put our percentage symbol, so 55%, right? So 11 20ths is equal to 0.55, which is equal to 55%. Now, again, kind of the quicker way to do this, I think everybody at this point knows that I can take 20, multiply it by 5 to get to 100. So I could have said, okay, 11 over 20, I can multiply this by 5 over 5. Again, I just need to figure out what I need to multiply the denominator by to get to 100. Right, and once I figure that out, I just do it to the numerator and denominator so that it's legal. 11 times 5 is 55. Over 20 times 5, that's 100. Again, now I have a percent. I have a fraction whose denominator is 100. So to write this as a percentage, just take the numerator, which is 55. Follow it up with a percentage symbol. 11 20ths is equal to 55 over 100, which is 55%. Okay, let's look at one that's a little bit more challenging. So I have 23 over 46. Now, let's say I started out and I said, okay, what number can I multiply 46 by to get to 100? Well, it's not going to be a whole number. So that's where it kind of gets a little challenging, right? That's where you might want to save some time by just doing the division, right? You might want to say in this case, okay, well, 23 divided by 46. And a lot of you already know this is going to be 0.5, right? Because 23 is half of 46. But I'll put my decimal point here and bring it up into the answer. Put a zero here. 46 is not going to go into 2. It's not going to go into 23, but it will go into 230 exactly five times. Five times 46 is 230. Subtract and we get zero. So as a decimal, we would write this as 0.5. Now, to convert it to a percentage, again, we just take that decimal point and move it one, two places to the right. It's going to be right there, and I can just get rid of it, right? 50 has a decimal point after the zero, but we don't need to write it and then put a percentage symbol after the zero, 
So it's 50%, right? 23 over 46 is equal to 0.5. That's also equal to 50%. Now let's say that we wanted to go through and try to do it using the other method. So 23 over 46 times what over what will give me something over 100. So we know from basic rules that 46 times some number equals 100. 100 divided by some number would give me 46, or 100 divided by 46 would give me this number. So let me just go down to a scratch sheet here. So 100 divided by 46, what is that? Well, we can divide it out and kind of get a decimal, or we can keep it as a fraction. If we actually go through and get the division, we're going to get a number that we don't want to mess with, right? It's very, very messy. So let's just keep this as 100 over 46, and I'll show you how you can kind of use it this way. So let's go back up to the top and say that 46 times 100 over 46 would give me 100. And you can go ahead and check that. If we were to multiply these two together, this would cancel with this and just leave me with 100. So that does work. Now, if I do it to the denominator, I've also got to do it to the numerator. Now you see how complicated this has become. So I know that if I multiply 23 times 100 over 46, let's just do that problem down here. So 23 times 100 over 46. So I know that 46 divided by 23 is two. So if I cancel this with this, I'm gonna have a two here and I have 100 up here. What is 100 divided by two? That's going to be 50. So I can just cancel this with this and put a 50. So my numerator is going to be 50. Now in the denominator, as I just explained, this would cancel with this, right? 46 over 46 is one, and I'd just be left with 100. So that's where I get that there. So I end up with 50 over 100, which again, as a percentage, is just 50%, right? I just take what's in the numerator and write it, follow it with my percentage symbol. So you can see in this case, it's probably not quicker to go through and deal with all this. I probably could have just did the division faster, but it just kind of depends. I mean, it's, it's fun to know both methods because in some cases it's quicker to do it this way. And in other cases, it's quicker to do, you know, the division and then convert that decimal into a percent, right? You just have to kind of know the situation.